This episode is sponsored by SmartVestor. Connect with an investing pro for free at RamseySolutions.com slash invest. You're listening to Ramsey Everyday Millionaires, where we talk investing, retirement, building wealth, and outrageous generosity. Tabitha is in Denver. Hi, Tabitha. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi there. How's it going? Better than we deserve. What's up? Um, so I'm seeking some advice. My husband and I don't agree on whether or not to pay off our car loans. Um, I'd like to pay them off, um, but he does not agree with that. He likes being in debt on a car? He he tells me, and I quote, um, paying off our car loans is like giving away free money based off of our low interest rates. So he actually <laughs> believes that people build wealth by borrowing on their cars. I I don't understand it, to be completely honest. It's something that we argue about pretty frequently, actually. Okay. Um, Okay, so how how can we help, do you think? Well, so I'm looking for ways that I can explain to him, like, why it would be worth it to pay the debt off. Okay. Um, Well, I, I, I... uh, Can I ask a quick question, Dave? Really quick. What are yeah. what's the interest rate on these two loans? So, um, in total, we have twenty seven thousand. Um, so twenty thousand on one, and it's three point four nine percent interest. Mm-hmm. Seven thousand on the other, and it's two point nine four percent interest. Okay. Well, hmm. l- let's address the theory yeah. <laughs> that he's operating on first. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, and then let me just tell you, I don't think. We can convince this guy. Mm -hmm. I don't think he has any desire to be convinced. I think he's already made his mind up, but we will, I will answer your question anyway. Okay. In other words, I don't think this is going to work, but I'll tell you. So what he's, what he's, his premise is, is that if you can borrow money at, what'd you say the interest rate was? 2.7%, right? Uh, One of them is 2.94. The other one is 3.49. Okay. So let's just call it 3%. Mm -hmm. All right. If you can borrow money at 3%, and you could invest it in a good mutual fund, and it made 10 or 12%, you're making the spread, okay? Mm-hmm. However, he's not doing that. He didn't invest the, he, he didn't invest the difference. There's no $27,000 investment out there as a result of having borrowed on these cars. So his, his premise is 100% theoretical. In other words, it's bull crap, Okay. Now, the problem with his premise, it sounds like if you invest money at 10% and you borrow at three, aren't you making a seven spread? Maybe. But if you made a seven spread, you have to pay taxes on it, and you've increased your risk load, your stress load, and you've strained your relationships in your household. And by the time you've done all of that, you really didn't make any money. So it's a bloody joke, okay? Because 7% on a, on ten thousand dollars is seven hundred bucks. Seven percent on thirty thousand dollars is twenty one hundred dollars. Okay, no one ever got rich on twenty one hundred dollars a year, ever, mathematically. Right. So again, his premise is absolute bullcrap because the numbers break down when you tear into it. Another reason we know that is is that we have done. We have worked with millionaires for decades, and a couple of years back, we did the largest study of millionaires ever done in North America. We studied 10,167 of them. I wrote about it in the book, Baby Steps Millionaires, and I'll send you a copy of it as my gift, okay? That might give us a chance at helping this guy, but I don't think this guy wants to be helped, so I usually can't help people that don't want to be helped, but anyway. As we studied 10,167 millionaires, we found that 89% of them were not millionaires because of inherited money. In other words, they invested money, they handled money wisely, they lived on less than they made, they got their house paid off, they stayed out of debt, and they built wealth. And that's how 89%, 9 out of 10 of America's 24 million millionaires right now, that's how they became millionaires. Okay, as we studied, Tabitha, 10,000 people who are rich, not broke people with a car payment and an opinion, 
but people who actually are rich, the number of them that we found that became wealthy due to borrowing on their car at 3% and investing the difference, uh, investing the amount instead at 10%, the number of people that did that to become millionaires out of 10,000 of them was precisely zero. None of them used your husband's plan to become wealthy. None of them. So what, what that statistically tells us is your husband is wrong, like you thought, okay? He loses the argument. Now, that still doesn't answer your question, how do we convince him? And I've told you three times already, I don't know if we can. But I'm trying to tell you, you're not crazy. You're accurate. You're, you know, he's kind of looking down like you're, you're like some kind of juvenile that can't do math and he has high math figured out when it's quite the opposite. Your women's intuition was way wiser than his screwed up half butt attempt at mathematics. Yeah. And I, I would go so far as to say this is a cop out. This is a quick little line that he's kind of manufactured from social media or some social message out there or some car dealer who sold him these cars. And this is his quick Heisman trophy stance to you. Like, I don't want to talk about it because I don't think he actually she know wants what that, to. It means you put your stiff arm out. Okay, <laughs> She might know what it means. Yeah. The point is, I know this. what it means. Thank okay, you. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, here, here's well, my I point. I had to think about it. So oh, I'm sure okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, so, so here's my point. I think it's a cop out because he doesn't want to do the hard work that you're asking him to do to budget, to sacrifice, to pay these things off. That's my take. Yeah. And I think I'd push in a little bit further as his wife and say, I don't feel safe financially carrying this debt. I think you got to have a real conversation. I think it's a marriage conversation because he's not allowing for a financial conversation. Yeah. And there's a lack of respect towards you. That's Mm -hmm. just not okay. That's getting me riled up and giving you this answer. And, uh, because I kind of hear him sneering a little bit in this, like, Oh, you just little lady. I think so. I had the same feel like that little line he had like in his holster and he just kind of pulls it out, flings it at her. uh, Go away. Yeah. It it does feel dismissive. I got this. Yeah. It does. Yeah. And, and the hilarious thing is, is he's a hundred (laughs) percent totally wrong. wrong. It's a hundred percent wrong. (laughs) And Tabitha wins. Ding, 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 ding. Now how to get him to do it, Tabitha. I don't know. And probably not all the snark that Ken and I are employing. It probably (laughs) won't work. Right. So you're going to have to be more loving in that. But I think if he need, he needs to hear that how important this is to you, and he needs to hear that he has to respect you. Yeah. Now, my wife and I can have a good argument about most anything, but I'm going to respect her opinion. And at the end of the argument, we may do one, we may do the other. Neither There's no, no set rule that one of us has to, quote, win or not. Um, but we're going to do it in a respectful way meaning that I'm not going to be dismissive and she's not going to be dismissive. Like you just, you just, you just, you're just a man. You don't understand. And, um, I mean, she tries that sometimes she tried that when we're like putting furniture in the new house. Like I'm an idiot. Cause I don't know anything about decorating. Cause I can't even match my clothes. And so there's the problem is she's <laughs> is locked. that an actual quote. Is, is, no, I mean, but that's oh, basically okay. the, that's basically the tone, right? That's because, <laughs> Because it's also felt. accurate. I, I have to think about my clothes a lot just to make sure something That's doesn't so funny. flash. And so, yeah. yeah, and like you don't know anything. You're just yeah. a, you're just a yeah. knuckle dragger. You don't know anything about decorating, <laughs> right? Yeah, and I don't. Right, but I do know what I like, and it's my freaking house. So I get a say. There's that. You don't get to dismiss me. I and agree. She doesn't get to dismiss, and I don't get to dismiss her. She her opinion too. She lives in that house too. It's her money too. Yeah. So we have to work through this. This is called marriage, and sometimes it's. Uh, a challenge. Yeah. Tabitha, roll it back on YouTube and let him get mad at us. Yeah, that's okay. why we do this. That'd be okay. Yeah, I'm <laughs> pretty good at pissing off reluctant spouses. It's like a gift. Because they're wrong. Thanks for tuning in to Ramsey Everyday Millionaires. To learn more about investing, visit RamseySolutions.com slash investing or click the link in the show notes. Ramsey Solutions is a paid non-client promoter of participating pros. Learn more at RamseySolutions.com slash smartvester.